Hello, in this presentation, we will enter a reversing entry for the adjusting entry of accounts receivable within QuickBooks Pro 2018. If you've been continuing with us, we will be continuing with the Get Great Guitars problem. If not, that's okay. We're going to be talking about reversing and adjusting entry that was made at the end of the time period, the purpose of the adjusting entry, and the reasoning of the reversing process as well as the function and how do we do the reversing process if you have the backup file to this point you can restore that by going to the file and restore we currently have the open windows tab open which you can go to at view and open window list the only open window being the home tab at that at this time if you want to open the home tab if it's not open at this point go to the company and home page to open the home tab we're going to talk about a uh, reversing entry for accounts receivable. And first, we have to look at why did we put that accounts receivable journal entry in there? What's the point of reversing it? And remember, we looked at this last time. We have a prior presentation of the adjusting entry for uh, an invoice. The, the uh, issue is that an invoice would have been entered after the cutoff date. And therefore, the revenue would have been entered after the cutoff date for which the work was actually done before the cutoff date and therefore the revenue that QuickBooks has generated for the invoice was posted after the date in which we need it to be posted in. In other words, in this case, it was posted in March. That's when the invoice was generated and we needed to pull that in that income back into uh, February in accordance with the revenue recognition principle. In order to do that, we reversed the whole uh, invoice. We didn't want to change the invoice. We didn't want to change the dates on it uh, because that's really not proper uh, accounting. Oftentimes we can't do that. There might be other things that are connected to the invoice. And really we would like to have a paper trail in which the invoice is at, in there as its original format and make any adjustments that we need to at a later point. And so we made a reversing entry, basically making the journal entry related to a creation of an invoice into the uh, adjusting process as of the end of the time period. Now we're going to reverse that. So let's take a look at what happened here. We're going to go to the reports up top. We're going to go to company and financial and we're going to scroll down to the balance sheet standard. We're going to change the dates. We're going to go to customize reports up top and the dates are going to be 0101212. 02 28 one January 1st 2021 to February 28th 2021 and then we're going to scroll down to what happens with this invoice so if we look at accounts receivable we can see part of this transaction and if we scroll down we see that this is the invoice that we created so this is not it's actually not an invoice note that what we did is create a journal a general journal that uh, will mirror what would happen in the invoice the invoice actually having been created in the following month so if we double click on this item this is how we generated it we we didn't do a journal entry we used a register in order to to generate this invoice if we close this back out close this back out and if we go to the profit and loss by going to the reports up top company and financial profit and loss Changing the dates to 010121 to 022821. We're going to look at the merchandise sales and we'll see this same information. So we'll double click on the merchandise sales and there's that uh, general journal again recording the revenue here in the sales item. So I'm going to close this back out. The other side of it is in the cost of goods sold here. Double clicking on that, here's the cost of that inventory, 400. If we double click on that, that's another registered journal entry that we put here. And closing this back out, we're back here. So in essence, when we create an invoice, we know that accounts receivable is going up. We know that sales is going up here. We know that cost of goods sold went up. And we know that inventory is going down and uh, taxes payable is going up. So all that is happening when we created the invoice and we uh, adjusted that invoice back into this time period. Now let's take a look at the next month, the month of March. We're going to say that that is going to be 03012120 03 
31 to 1. And so March 1st, 2021 to March 31st, 2021, we have this invoice here. This is the only thing we have so far. And this is the invoice that we entered in March that we had to then pull back to February because at the point the invoice was generated was a point after the date in which the work was actually done, meaning the work was done in um, February and we wrote the invoice in March, QuickBooks recording the inventory or the revenue in March. So if we double click on this, here is the actual invoice that we basically recreated with, with general journal entries in uh, February. And what happened when we did that then, we made February correct, but as of this point in time then, we're gonna close this back out, close this back out. As of this point in time when this was recorded, now it's been recorded twice, meaning this $500 of revenue was recorded in February, the correct time period, and now it's recorded again in March. So what we need to do is have a reversing entry, and we're gonna reverse what we did in order to put that journal entry into February. You'll note that this invoice was in there as of something like March 5th, I believe it was. The reversing entries, however, are not going to be reversed as of the date of this invoice that it's reversing. Typically, we're going to put them all in there as of the first day following the month that the adjusting entry was made. Adjusting entry made as of the end of February. The reversing entry then made the first day after or March 1st. So there's going to be a couple days, in other words, between that point in time, March 1st, and the point in time that this invoice was created where the financials are kind of wrong on an accrual basis where that isn't reported and that's okay because we made it correct as of the financial statement date and then it's going to be correct as of the end of the month it will be correct as of the date that this um, invoice was created so we're going to reverse what we did uh, in terms of an adjusting entry at the end of 1231 as of March 1st of the following month so let's do that. I'm going to change the dates back. I'm going to go to say back to 02. Let's make it go back to 01, 01, 21, 2, 02, 28, 21. Back to the prior time frame. Now there's two sides of this entry that we have to reverse. Typically, we would reverse these entries by doing a journal entry, by going to the company and going down to make journal entry. But in an attempt not to use debits and credits, we are using the registers in order to uh, do this. So we're going to do this with registers looking at plus and minuses rather than looking at debits and credits. It's going to be the same type of concept, however. So we have these sales. We know that part of the reversing process was that we had accounts receivable go up. We had sales go up. And the other side of that is the, um, the payable for the sales tax payable. If we go back to the balance sheet, that's actually the register that it's easiest for us to use. It's going to be this uh, sales tax payable account. We're going to go into the sales tax payable and basically record that half of the journal entry. So in order to do that, we're going to go to the banking up top. We're going to go to use register. And we're going to look for that sales tax payable. So if I scroll down, uh, we're looking for the register of the sales tax payable. There it is and we're going to say okay we can now see what has happened before so this is the actual invoice that we made this reversing entry for so this entry happened in march we made this adjusting entry this general journal entry as of the end of february in order to reverse this and now we're reversing this uh, entry right here so this is going to be as of march 1st and we're basically going to going to do the reverse of this item here so if we look at th this item we see that we had a build item, so we're gonna be in the paid section. And then we have this split here. So if we want to see that split, sometimes QuickBooks will let us uh, use the split icon and show us this split there. So there's the split. So we wanna do the reverse of this, meaning we're gonna go into the paid 25, we're gonna go into merchandise sales, have a positive 500, and then accounts receivable have a negative 525. So let's close that back up. We're gonna go into the paid section as of March 1st. We wanna be on the paid side for 25. And then we're gonna select the split. Instead of just one account, we need two accounts and see what that split will be. One account is gonna be the sales account for merchandise sales. 
the amount of merchandise sales was 500 we're going to put a negative 500 which in essence is the opposite of what we did here because we're reversing this journal entry the other side's going to be accounts receivable and we're going to put a positive 525 in essence because that's reversing this transaction up here it's the opposite of what we did here and then we're going to choose the customer which will be sam the guitar man we got to have a customer or quickbooks will not let us post anything to the accounts receivable account now this is one of those areas where this ledger putting it in this ledger is almost as difficult as or it is surely more difficult if we understand debits and credits as using journal entries However, if we don't understand debits and credits, we can use the register and possibly use a little bit of trial and error in order to work with the register. Typically, the registers work best when there's only two accounts involved in a transaction. And when that's the case, uh, we can basically say we're going to do whatever we need to do to one side of the transaction and then just point to another account. And QuickBooks can, in essence, debit and credit the correct accounts. Uh, in this case, there's three accounts involved. That makes it a little bit more difficult. But we know what's happening in terms of we know that sales is going up on our on our invoice or sales is being affected on our invoice. We are reversing sales of the 500. We know that we're reversing the accounts receivable of 525, the sales plus the sales tax. And we know that the accounts payable is affected by the amount of not the accounts payable, the sales tax payable by the amount of the sales tax. So let's go ahead and see if it lets us uh, record this. If we're not in balance, it wouldn't let us record this and we can use some trial and error to try to figure out uh, which way these things are going using the, the registers. So we're gonna say record this. We needed to add a vendor here. So I added the vendor of New York State sales tax for that 25 and say record. There we have that information. If we go back up to the balance sheet now, we are going to look at the first date in March. So I'm going to change this to 03-3121, first day in March. And we have the sales tax payable. If we double click on the sales tax payable, I'm going to change the from range to 010121 and tab through this. We have, we have our adjusting entry here. We have the reversing of the adjusting entry in the first day of the next month. And then we have recorded again, this being the actual invoice that was recorded. Or in reverse, this is the original invoice that was recorded in the wrong date in March, which we pulled back to February in order to adjust for it. And then we reversed it in the following month so that these two will, uh, will match out and, and not cause a problem. So we're going to close that back out. We should see the same kind of effect in the accounts receivable. If we scroll up accounts receivable, double click it on the accounts receivable, changing the beginning date to 010121, refreshing this. Once again, we see our adjusting entry. We see it's being reversed as of the first day of the next month. And then we see uh, the actual invoice, or in other words, the invoice was originally created in the wrong month. We recreated it in February. And then we reversed it the first day of the next month in order to cancel these two out and not have this entered two times. So we're going to close this back out again. We're going to go to the profit and loss. And if we take a look at the profit and loss, double clicking on the merchandising sales. We have the, this is the current period. So um, the period in which we made the financial statements as of, and we have the, uh, 500 in the New York st state sales tax there. If we look at the next period, 03-31-21, uh, then we can see the full items here. So here it is in terms of our adjusting entry. Here's us reversing it in March, and here's the actual invoice. So the same kind of pattern happening, or in other words, here it is recorded in, this, in the wrong month. Here it is, us fixing it with an adjusting entry. Here's our reversal of that adjusting entry so that this is not entered two times. If we close that back out, now we're gonna do the same thing for the second half of the transaction, that being the decrease or the increase in cost of goods sold, and the other side of that is the inventory going down. So if we double click on this item, we see this 400 right there, that's our adjusting entry this is what we're going to reverse. I'm going to close this back out and I'm going to go back into that register 
back into a register from the balance sheet, the other side of this being the inventory. So we're going to try going to the inventory register to reverse this. So in order to do that, we're going to go to the banking. We're going to go to use register. And we're going to scroll down to the register, that register, the inventory asset register. Clicking on that. And here are our items. So here is our adjusting entry as of uh, the end of March or February. Here's the actual uh, invoice. And here is us where we're going to just fix this. So we're going to reverse this back out. So this journal entry, it only has two, uh, two accounts. So it should be easier this time than the last one. And note what we did here. We had the decrease side. So to reverse it, we're just going to go to the increase side here. And the other account here was cost of goods sold. We're going to have the same other account, cost of goods sold. So we're just reversing this item out. Then we will record this and see if it does what we hope it should do. So we will record this. Going to close this back out. And then if we go through our uh, balance sheet, now if we look at our inventory, here's our inventory, double clicking on that. If we change the date range from 010121 to the end of the month, here's our three items again. Here's our adjusting entry as of the end of the month. Here's our reversing of the adjusting entry as of the first day of the next month. And here's the actual invoice uh, that was created in the incorrect month. If we close this out and go to the other side of this on the profit and loss and we take a look at the cost of goods sold and change the dates from 010121 to 033121 we see that same activity here. Here's our journal entry bringing it back into the, to the month it needs to be in. Here's the error that happened or the invoice that was created in the wrong month and then here's us doing our reversing entry. In other words, here it is in the wrong month. It was entered in the wrong month. Right transaction, wrong month. Here's us pulling it back into the correct month. And then here's us reversing it as of the first day of the next month. So that would complete the reversing process for an um, invoice. And if you can understand this reversing process and this entry process, then you're doing a really good job of understanding what an invoice is actually doing in terms of recording the invoice. Because by understanding this process, you first have to know what the invoice is doing and know all the accounts that are affected in order for you to then enter the transaction to mimic what the invoice is doing without an actual invoice, but through journal entries and or through a register format as we have done in the reversing entry process. And then you actually have to reverse that reversing entry doing kind of the opposite of what an invoice does as of the next time period. So. If you can really, if you can kind of understand what's going on here, you're really going to get a good idea of what's going on when you record an invoice.